In the spring of 2020, during the confinement, I started wandering between places in my hometown of Brussels. Traveling creates a distance between what one does and that what just happens. The longer the journey, the further we go, and yet the closer we come to defining ourselves in our home country, in exile, or even when traveling the world. During my walks, I wonder if, in our current ecology and economy, the creation of more artworks in my practice still makes sense. Every day I go out and walk without expectations or a destination, just walking and counting. Since 2002, I have produced 135 artworks and installations. In the studio, I have drawn a map recording the moments of appearance and disappearance of these works. I consider it the index of my archive of disappearance. Different categories become visible. Some works appear once and disappear into storage after their moment of public appearance. Some are destroyed. Others become part of a collection and stay on view permanently. Then there are works which appear, disappear in storage, and appear again in a different curatorial context. Some of the artworks develop further into other works, but one can say that the archival condition is the most common situation of most of the 135 works. I ask myself if it's possible for an artist to activate these archival conditions of their artwork in order to create new meaning and new work. When I walk, I think about desirable places, a map made up of connections only found in dreams. When I am asleep, images of non-existing houses, buildings, cities and highways are constructed in my mind. The known and the unknown, the past and the future interweave and intermingle, creating at times non-recognisable forms, forms I have not seen before. I return to imagine my future present. I walk and wonder if through post-production I can develop my artistic practice further. Since 2015, I have been experimenting with the activation of artworks during exhibitions. This activation allows the creation of a spatial temporal context for the work, constituting meaning and introducing a direct dialogue with the viewer. A dialogue can be seen as a way of dealing with distance. A stranger knows how to keep distance. Distances make new perspectives possible. The archive becomes the artist's studio. New layers of meaning are added on the existing works. The artist becomes the archaeologist of the recent past revisiting the archive and creating a new context and time for the work that changes its meaning into something new. Back in time. Spring 2018. I walk in Venice and meet a Belgian friend in the Giardini. She convinces me to apply for a PhD. I always doubted if I should start a PhD. It is especially the format that makes me afraid of being able to present knowledge, to post a written discourse that brings new original thinking into existence. I am not a theoretically enlightened person. I act very instinctively, and often the meaning and reading of what I want to say stays open, vague, ambiguous, non-defined. I consider these qualities as essential in any discourse that I find worth looking at. I do not like answers. I only like questions. The interest in my work at the time of the application shifted towards the activation of works during an exhibition. I consider the exhibition as an archival setting where an activation creates a spatial and temporal context of the activated work within a given architectural setting. I call such an exhibition an archive of disappearance, as every time the work is activated, it then appears to disappear again from the moment the activation stops.
The Archive of Disappearance Typology is a proposal for a research project in and through practice based on a specific body of work and presentation model that I have been experimenting with over the last five years. The project aims to address the activation of the architecture and the mechanisms of public appearance and disappearance of artworks in the contemporary museum. This project seeks, both in the realm of art and architecture, to lead to alternative typologies for presenting or reading artworks, in which the physical space or spatial conditions are enhanced with other forms of interaction, introducing text, performance or other media. The research focuses on the shift of the question, what is art, towards when is art? In order to develop a model that expands beyond my own practice, I return in time to the conceptual movement starting in the 1960s, where the question, what is art, was of most importance. The question was the main quest of the legendary group exhibition show, when attitudes become form, works, concepts, processes, situations, information, organized by Harald Zeman in the Kunsthalle in Bern, in 1969. An exhibition restaged in Venice in 2013 by Germano Salent in the Prada Foundation. The evolutionary character of an artwork and its reappearance was of main importance for Brazilian artist Helio Otichica. He archived his work based on the classification methods of taxonomy and developed protocols for the reappearance of his art installations. In 1969, his work was shown at the Whitechapel in London, an installation that became reference for posthumously exhibitions of his work. Architecture and art. In the When Attitude Becomes Form exhibition, I chose one room to illustrate my methodology. I imagine walking through the space. By reading the information and the legends, looking through the many pictures of the original exhibition, and studying the remake in Venice, it becomes clear that the question, what is art, becomes irrelevant, and that the question, when is art, is more pertinent when considering a group show of a certain art movement. The original exhibition testified to a new way of making and presenting art, a new way of making exhibitions and a new relation with its public. Its remake was by contrast a typical exhibition setting in which the artifacts presumed the status of untouchable objects with a high market value. According to me, this is the result of looking at the artworks and the exhibition in the context of the question, what is or was conceptual art, rather than the question, when is conceptual art? Although through the question of what is art, the notions of remake, documentation, copy and original are relevant questions and give rise to an interesting debate, this debate is very similar to any other remake of an exhibition with fragile artefacts. If the question would have been, when is conceptual art, other more pertinent issues would have become relevant. The remake also claims that the context of the works, or the exhibition, is to be taken as ready-made and installed in the Venice Palace. But again, it is the spatial context that is remade not the happening or the attitude. It is a dead material that is retaken. Although the confrontation between the two architectural settings is interesting, it would have made no difference if another exhibition space containing the artworks was inserted in the palace. Aside from the interesting confrontation of old and new, the experience of the scale of the original exhibition and how the works were placed in the space the insertion obscures the original negotiation with the space of the Kunsthalleban. What does it mean then to ask the question, when is art, for restaging this exhibition? 
The first question is if a recreation even makes sense. And if so, then how does the work reappear in another time and context? And finally, if the artwork's meaning is changed, does it still make sense? Is a reintroduction of the context and the materiality of the, art, of the work, because of its conceptual character, able to propose the when question in a relevant manner? In 1969, the exhibition and the, and the works came into existence through a live presence and interaction of the artists in conversation with Harold Seaman. A relation with the public was elaborated during the opening through the activation of certain works, some of which continued during the duration of the show. Some of the works were a trace or result of an action. They have an inherent performative character and happen at a certain moment, but their real moment of appearance or primary appearance, one could say as an echo of Siegelab's primary information, is during their making or activation. Other works are conceptual but remain objects that can appear and disappear like any other artwork. My selected room contains the artworks of eight artists who have been different positions towards the reappearance of their work. For Fred Sandback, the same work reinstalled in the same place, exactly what, when attitude becomes form, tried to do in 2013. However, his piece is placed in a different location in the room. It is now a different piece because the time is different. Karl Andre's work was originally conceived for the terrace of the Hauslange in Krefeld and is now considered site-specific. So its presentation in Bern can already be seen as somewhat of a reconstruction or documentation of displacement. It is already a work that appears in another context, and some aspects of the original work are lost. It can be seen as what I would call a curatorial reappearance. In the reconstruction in Venice, the original work is installed again. But meanwhile, one is no longer allowed to walk over the piece transforming it into a sculpture to look at rather than interact with. In the wall marking, later called wall drawing, of Saul Lewitt, activation is used in order to make the work appear in a curatorial event. Expressing thought processes that the artist conceived beforehand, the wall drawings were executed by draftsmen directly on the walls at the scale of the exhibition venue. They were executed on site existed for the duration of the show, and were then destroyed. Sol Lewitt described this activation as a machine that makes art. Like musicians performing a musical score, each time these draftsmen interpreted the geometric formula set out by Lewitt, they interpreted it slightly differently and in their own way. Although in the reconstruction of the band wall in Venice, the drawing is executed on a higher position than the original one, while still allowing Lewitt's formula. This is the same work for Lewitt. The blips of Richard Archschwager are elements he continued to produce during his whole career and are reenacted by his estate in Venice only in relation to the architecture of the Bern Kunsthalle. However, one can ask if Archschwager himself would not have reacted differently to the spatial confrontation of the Kunsthalle and the Venice Palace. Since they are remade by the estate and put in the same position as in Bern whenever possible, they can in a way still function as they did in 1969. But they take no position to the spatial differences of 2013. Archschwager himself considered the blips as temporary notions to mark directions to draw attention to certain spatial situations in architecture or in the city shape. The same concept reappears again and again in another context, but the form has some variations and is made new and later destroyed after the time of the exhibition. The six Bücher of Hannah der Boven are already 
a strange element in the original exhibition room. They are placed on sockles under vitrines, presenting one page only, and contradict with one of the main starting points of the exhibition, the abolition of the sockles. I believe that this is one of the object-based conceptual artworks where the object is conceptual in itself and can appear and disappear. The object has no particular relation with the spatial context of the exhibition room. Instead, the combination of the sockle and the vitrine create the space of the work. The work can be reinstalled the same way wherever it is shown. The relation with the spatial context or the other artworks is absent through the use of the vitrine. Mel Buckner's work, 13 Sheets of Eight and a Half Graph Paper. I first considered site-specific and related to the architecture of the room, measuring the distance between two windows of the Kunsthalle. Here, the reconstruction of the architecture can make sense, but in the remake, the work is completely placed on another wall. For me, this perfectly encapsulates a problem when one focuses on the question, what is art, and forgets the question, when is art? The work could have been easily remade in the adapted architectural situation. Bachner himself considers that his artworks are not a portable object, but are a portable idea. For Bachner, as long as the internal relationships of measurements and materials remain constant, it is the same work no matter where it is. After my first reading of the reappearance of Bachner's work in the Venice restaging of When Attitude Becomes Form, I found a letter from Bochner to Zeman, reproduced in the catalogue of the original exhibition, where he proposes this work for the Ban exhibition. This means that the work pre-existed. The situation of the work between the two windows is an appearance or reappearance in a specific curatorial and spatial context. I believe the confusion of the site-specific character of the work could have been part of the reinstallation in 2013. Robert Ryman's Classico III is moved to a different exhibition room in Venice and no longer is placed in a spatial relation with the other works in the room. As such, it acts as an independent artifact presented in a group show. Franz Erhard Walter's Werksatz are folded neatly in a corner of the room in Venice and are no longer activated. Here again, they are treated as treasured art objects instead of objects to be activated by the public. Franz Erhard Walter comments on this in an interview during the Venice Biennale of 2017, stating that simply the idea that his works can be activated should provoke the same effect with the viewer. Something I truly question. In the end, I must conclude that the concept of this restaging of the Bern exhibition in the Venice Palace results in many changes to the appearance of the works in the room, changing their meaning and relation to the other works and the space itself. I believe that through drawings, these changes can be made visible. I decide to draw and map all the changes of architecture and works. Yellow becomes the color of Bern 69. Deep blue is the color of the Venetian Palace and orange is the colour of the elements built in the palace to reconstruct Bern. I draw the works in the room and map the change of position they undergo in this process. In September, I am walking in Chateau Vert, this time in a sculpture garden, thinking of what to do. I walk every day between the house where I am staying and the art centre. In the beginning of the park are the traces of a no longer existing building. Although no one can tell what it was, the rectangular footprint is surrounded by trees on three sides, creating a kind of room. On the fourth side, there is a cypress creating a vertical orientation point in the landscape. One of the first nights, I stay too late in the art center. Walking back in the complete darkness, I get lost in the park. I try to find my way back home, and after some time, I notice a cypress. 
It is like a black shadow in the dark blue sky. I believe the architecture of this place makes sense for me as a site for my sculpture project. It creates a moment of regularity in the vastness of the surrounding landscape. As an experiment, I draw the outlines of the exhibition room I researched in Ben and Venice onto the landscape. Its forms fit very well in the shape of the surrounding trees. I consider it as a mental space, like an archaeological trace, and try to imagine how to present the works in relation to the question, when is art? I imagine a visual audio guide, seeing the linguistic character of conceptual art. Maybe this experiment could make sense. I walk in the sculpture garden towards the art centre and wonder that perhaps uncertainty is the attitude necessary for directing a contemporary art centre, a constant questioning of what contemporary art is about. I decide to make an audio guide to getting lost. The audio guide will accompany a sculpture in the garden that I will call incertitude. The sculpture will be activated by the audience through the audio guide's positioning of different attitudes concerning contemporary art and sculpture. Through this activation and critical remark of when attitude becomes form, I aim to interrogate the shift of the question of what is art to when is art? Sculpture as a forum. I imagine the sculpture as a horizontal platform on which lines are painted and 25 flags are fluttering in the wind. This creates a dynamic scene in the garden, like a party is taking place. The sculpture is a playground of opinions. It is as much a sculpture as it is a place, not an object to look at. The visitor is invited to walk on the sculpture and by pointing the smartphone towards a QR code on the flag, the video appears on the phone. In this video, you see an actress standing in the park who tells you what art or what the idea of the artwork is of different artists in the room. A number of different opinions are declared, sometimes opposite, sometimes equal creating uncertainty and confrontation of what contemporary art and sculpture is. Back in time. In 2006, I walk in New York and pass a bookshop where I stop and buy a book. It is Rebecca Solnit's A Field Guide to Getting Lost. On page five, she writes, certainly for artists of all stripes, the unknown, the idea or the form of that tale that has not yet arrived, is what must be found. It is a job of artists to open doors and invite in prophecies, the unknown, the unfamiliar. It is where their work comes from, although its arrival signals the beginning of the long, disciplined process of making it their own. <laughs>